Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service out of San Diego. Well, uh, the month of July was the hottest on record for the state of California uh, and the hottest any month on record. Let's take a look at how this happened uh, across our region. This shows it, uh, the anomaly on the left-hand side, several degrees above normal over our interior California valleys, deserts, mountains, uh, some places as much as six degrees above normal uh, over that area, the top of the scale. The right-hand side shows you uh, where was it the hottest uh, for the month of July? Where did we have all-time records? It's those red areas uh, across the deserts and scattered across the mountains, including the mountains and deserts of Southern California shown here. Now, our immediate coast was near normal. So you're thinking, you know, well, it didn't affect us. Well, that is true. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Hottest month, any month. Uh, so this is showing all the Julys compared to the most recent 30-year average. We were 5.5 degrees above average. That's a huge number across the state. Uh, it beat the prior hottest July by 2 degrees, as shown here, by 2 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the ranking. All the number ones uh, are shown in maroon here. Hottest ever recorded uh, for July. Those are interior uh, locations all the way into the Central Valley of California. If you look at particular climate locations like Palm Springs, number one. July was the hottest, averaging 100, but it's the hottest month ever at Palm Springs. Borrego Springs, same thing. Keep in mind, when we say hottest month on record, we're talking about low temperatures and high temperatures averaged together for the entire month. June and July, together, we can still see, uh, even though the real heat started in late June, we can still see that it's still made uh, record breaking in the red shaded on the left-hand side. So all those areas combined June and July were number one warmest, including some of the mountains of Southern California and our deserts. Now, the good news is our reservoirs remain full thanks to the back-to-back -back wet years, especially 23 water year that had record snowpack in the Sierra Nevada. So reservoirs are at or above historical levels, which is great. Uh, we haven't had much of a monsoon, however, just pockets of monsoon as shown here, 29 Palms, San Diego Mountains. San Diego Mountain thunderstorms have allowed it to be close to normal, but a little bit below. We've had above normal rainfall, just in a small pocket around 29 Palms. Now across the whole West, uh, the monsoon has also been spotty. Really good above average monsoon in Southwest Colorado and Northern New Mexico and few parts of Arizona, but mostly Southern California, below average monsoon compared to normal. Now we've also seen with these warm temperatures and limited monsoon, high evaporation demand. Uh, and so that's really showing up in the mountains and deserts of Southern California and the deep Southwest and Central California shown here. Uh, the heat waves driving this. The soil's drying out as shown here, the soil's really drying out uh, and we do see indications of severely drying soil in Southeast California and even in parts of Northern California. Currently, as I mentioned, no drought in Southern California, uh, but it is start to expand slowly in Northern California as shown here. So we'll keep a close eye on this as we go into the fall and early winter. Currently no drought in Southern California. Fire weather has been a big problem. These temperatures have been driving that, the record warm July. This is about uh, a million acres burned in California to date. And our fuel moisture has been reflected in those hot temperatures near record low levels, touching the red there on the right-hand side in early July. Right now, we've recovered some of the fuel moisture in Southern California, and we're right around average levels. But these temperatures have been driving this uh, fire behavior as well, with abundant fuel from the two wet seasons we just experienced between 23 and 24. The weather pattern. This is ultimately what drives our heat waves, the heat dome on average, average again across the entire uh, region for July has been centered over the deep Southwest, Southern California and Western Arizona as shown here. This is what's resulted in the record breaking July temperatures. 
The water temperatures have been helping us on the immediate coast, as mentioned earlier, back in mid-July, they were running right about average. Then when we moved into early August, we've actually seen some below average sea surface temperatures along our immediate coast. However, take a look what's going on in the East Pacific. Very large area of warmer than average, anomalously warm water in the Eastern Pacific that is drifting to the east and expanding warmth across the Baja region to our south. Now, down near the equator, La Nina is trying to develop, but you see it's a mixed bag, pockets of warm and cold. So La Nina is having trouble developing. Uh, and your eye should be turned to these very warm, anomalously pockets of water in the Eastern Pacific. Now, if we look at Scripps Pier, where there's long records of sea surface temperatures, you can also see that warming. That was significant in early July, coincident with the heat wave. Then we had upwelling, uh, and temperatures in our ocean have really dropped off significantly, and they're now below average, uh, where we're looking at temperatures uh, that have been consistently in the 60s, uh, even low 60s at times. That's what's helped the immediate coast from L.A. to San Diego, uh, and that's why our month of August uh, and July is coming out as near average. This has not helped interior California overall in our valleys, mountains, and deserts. Here are some resources for heat and weather alerts that we issue from the National Weather Service, as well as tracking uh, water and precipitation across our region. Thanks for joining, everyone.